Hello and welcome to this training video on developing cultural competency. I'm Mark Brennan, Project Director for Continuing Education at the Missouri Institute of Mental Health in St. Louis, Missouri. And with me today is Dr. Anna Maria Valentin. She is a licensed psychologist and currently is the clinical director of the Maddie Rhodes Counseling and Arts Center. Her specialization includes Latino mental health, multicultural, cross-cultural counseling, and family systems theory. Her extensive experience includes over 15 years of direct service in both community-based organizations and private practice. Her experience also includes presenting at numerous conferences and workshops addressing cultural competence and Latino mental health issues. Hi, Anna Maria, how are you? Hello. I'm Thank very uh, thankful that you're here with us to talk with us today about these issues of developing cultural competency. And I know that you have brought a scenario that you'd like to read that will introduce this er uh, topic and will help us to better frame our interview. Thank you. Yes, I, I do like to um, start with this um, small scenario. Let me read that. Um, one day, a traveling salesman from the city went calling on clients in the country. Happy at being away from the city in which he lived, and disarmed by the beauty of the land, Jay was soon cruising along contently. He was brought up short, however, as he headed up a hill and found a tractor coming over the crest in his lane. The other driver, Heather, quickly turned to avoid hitting Jay, but as she passed, she looked right at him and yelled, Pig! 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 Taken aback by the woman's words, Jay muttered some epithet under his breath and angrily gunned his car. As he sped over the hill, however, he was forced to slam on his brakes to avoid crashing into a huge pig sitting in the middle on, of the road. It's an interesting story. Do you want to try to help us to understand the significance behind that? Well, um, this um, story, I think, is very pertinent to the topic that we are discussing mm -hmm. because it really talks about how, as human beings, we cannot avoid making assumptions. Mm -hmm. And in the helping prof we, in the helping profession, if, when we talk about the whole field of multiculturalism, mm -hmm. um, there are sensitivities that we have. Um, everybody uh, in the field, it's like we become a little bit defensive as if are you implying that I am not sensitive? Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, everybody that comes to this field is because we are well-intended professionals that want to help people. Mm -hmm. And so um, this is not about doubting mm -hmm. that on okay. anybody. Mm -hmm. But what we know, um, and this when this scenario points out is that uh, we can help but make assumptions mm -hmm. and judgments mm -hmm. about people. Now add to that people from different cultures mm -hmm. uh, that we may not know. We don't know people's values, people's experiences, mm -hmm. people's experiences maybe from different lands. Mm -hmm. um, and add to that different languages. Right. Add to that sometimes the use of interpreters. Mm -hmm. So all of these layers that could add to misinterpretations, misdiagnosis, mm -hmm. um, so it gets very complicated. So how do we as healthcare providers um, stop making assumptions? Well, one of the things I think that we, uh, what we know from social psychology, 
the field of social psychology is that it takes microseconds to make a judgment. Mm -hmm. And how we do that is by judging an action. Mm -hmm. We judge others by their actions mm -hmm. without knowing their intentions, and yet we judge our actions by our intentions. Oh. Because we know our intentions, but we don't know other people's intentions. Yes. Yes. And how we, because intentions, like I say, we don't know other people's, but um, we think we know them. So actually what you're saying is by making assumptions, we're actually taking shortcuts. And we do that without realizing that. Right, right. And that is our humanness, mm -hmm. that, that we don't even realize that mm -hmm. we're doing that. So, when, so to answer your question, how do we not do that, mm -hmm. is by realizing, but knowing that we do that, it's a human condition, mm -hmm. and the way we, we can train ourselves is, if we know we do that, then we can take an extra step in saying to ourselves, are we doing that? Is that an assumption that we're doing? Mm -hmm. is, or is this a fact? Mm -hmm. what, if, what, if, what if I am not the kind of person that asks myself those questions? What I'm suggesting to you is that we should be that kind of person, okay. that we need to be, mm -hmm. that in the field of diversity, we need to train ourselves just like we have trained ourselves to be empathic listeners, mm -hmm. just like we have trained ourselves to create alliance and all of those wonderful counseling skills. Those are skills mm -hmm. that we learn. Mm -hmm. We can train ourselves to, to stop ourselves from making those judgments and train ourselves, do we have the information to make a judgment about this person mm -hmm. that, are, that is different from us? Mm -hmm. well, let me ask you, I, I think that um, to be able to do that as a healthcare provider, there has, you have to have certain characteristics, like um, perhaps an openness, would you agree? And to me, that characteristic is a prerequisite mm -hmm. characteristic. Okay. When, when I hire a person, that is the, the number one prerequisite characteristic. I am not looking for how much knowledge do you have, for example, in our case, working with Latinos. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, if you tell me you know everything about working with Latinos, to me that's a, that's a sign that, that there's, there's a problem here. Okay. What I'm looking for is that openness and flexibility, okay. that, that desire to want to learn, mm -hmm. that, that to me that says, that says I am open mm -hmm. and I want to learn. Mm -hmm. And I have that regard and respect to want to learn about people mm -hmm. and want to learn about myself as I work with people. Mm -hmm. And I want to learn about differences. So clearly those two characteristics, openness and flexibility, are the two characteristics that you see are essential building blocks for an individual who would be open to understanding themselves and developing cultural competency. And to me, cultural competency is a journey mm -hmm. that never stops. It's a journey that is both a professional as well as a personal journey. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you can separate you as a person from a professional. Mm -hmm. And it, it, um, you can send your people to all the cultural sensitivity workshops that come around to your town. Mm -hmm. And you're not gonna do it. Okay. As long, but if you are the kind of person that has those qualities, mm -hmm and you are supported by an organization that provides you with the opportunities, mm -hmm. then to me that's the perfect match. Okay. 
So it, you've given me some notes that I'm, I'm looking at, and I think you consider that influences on the world view. Do you want to talk about that? Well, the, the, when you, um, as a helping professional, encounter an, another human being, mm -hmm. um, you have to recognize that every encounter with a person holds both a combination of um, sameness and differentness. Okay. And th that complexity is, um, is, is very important. And so how can you relate to the humanness that we share? as well as that specificity in terms of culture. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to know about that person's uh, culture, and it is broadly defined. Mm -hmm. How do they identify, and what is salient about that person? Mm -hmm. uh, and you want to know that not because you want some generalizations and go, aha, uh -huh, I know how this person is going to feel, mm -hmm. but to have as a hypothesis mm -hmm. and knowledge because of how they are going to express their distress, mm -hmm. how they are coping mechanisms, um, and, and a number of things. And then how, what their individual uniquenesses are. Mm -hmm. So those three spheres, a combination of that makes to me that complexity of a human being. Well, Go ahead, I'm sorry. For example, in terms of the individual uniqueness of a person, mm -hmm. just because I know your sister doesn't mean I know you. Both of you could have gone through the same, let's say, immigration process. Mm -hmm. But how it affected you mm -hmm. could have been totally different than how it affected her. Mm -hmm. And I have to listen to you with that openness mm -hmm. to hear how you were affected, mm -hmm. and have to honor that. So the basic understanding that you might have with regard to my sister and I's upbringing could serve as a backdrop, but that certainly doesn't cover all of the experiences. What you would want to do is talk with me as an individual to find out what my experiences were, which may have been the same, but I may come away feeling very different about that. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Okay. And that you are not a representative of your whole cultural group. Well, that's a very interesting um, concept because I think a lot of times people misconstrue that in the helping field, that they assume that if, if I were to be a culturally competent person, I should have to know everything about other people's culture. And what you're telling me is that's important, but it's not all that is important. That's correct. Mm. It is important to have some sort of basis of knowledge, mm -hmm. but it's not all of what you need. Just as important is for you to have your, uh, the skills that you have learned as you have um, become the professional that you have. It's important, but it's not all what you need. Yes, exactly. So this uh, process of cultural competence, what does it begin with? I think it, that it, it has to do with, uh, it's a journey mm -hmm. um, that has no end. Mm -hmm. And it begins with recognizing that it is your process, mm -hmm. that you own it, mm -hmm. and it is a self-awareness process. Mm -hmm. So if you own it and it's yours, then you must recognize for yourself where are you in this process. That's a really hard thing to do, I think, sometimes, because that, what you're saying is I have to then begin looking at perhaps my own biases, uh, which I don't think a lot of times people are comfortable doing. And absolutely, they are not comfortable. Nobody's comfortable. Sure. Nobody's comfortable. And even it's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. And actually, even if I try to do it myself, mm -hmm. it's very hard to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I also know that there are times when I see think, people doing things, and if I don't understand why they're doing what they're doing, I get uncomfortable. It makes me feel uneasy. And so I might, in fact, attribute a particular reason because it makes me feel more comfortable. And I think what you were saying before is that's the shortcut, and that if I'm aware of my own prejudices or my own 
biases, then I can stop myself from doing that and say, maybe because I don't understand this doesn't necessarily mean that I should put a label on it, that I should secondarily ask some questions. It, culture cannot explain everything, yes. but it cannot be dismissed entirely. Okay. There's a place for it. And sometimes we do not know what it is. Mm -hmm. It's very, it, if it was simple, we would have figured all of this out. Sure. But because it's very, differences are difficult. Mm -hmm. And so that's why um, we are having the difficulty that we're having. Mm -hmm. But our system of care has been created to, it's like a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is that we have disparities in care. Mm -hmm. And then, so whose responsibility is it to, to, to do something about this? Mm -hmm. What would your answer to that question be? My answer to that, and actually the Surgeon General's uh, response to this, is it's the system's responsibility. Mm. If, if truly, and I think everybody has to answer that question for themselves. Mm -hmm. if, if we have diverse communities in this country, mm -hmm. now, people may not like that we have diverse communities in this country, mm -hmm. but the fact is we do. Mm -hmm. Now, we are in the helping profession. If we want to be effective with people, then with all people, then whose responsibility is it to be effective with all people? Mm -hmm. Is it the system to be flexible in the way we provide services, or is it the communities to try to adapt to one way of doing things. Mm -hmm. um, and the Surgeon General said the system has to change to be flexible to adapt to diverse communities. Well, and there's really pragmatic reasons for that also. I think that if you look at systems uh, getting money uh, funded uh, either through the state or federal government, they have a mandate to provide the kind of care that is um, consistent with the clientele. Would that be reasonable to assume? I think that's reasonable to assume, and I think as the diversity continues to grow, mm -hmm. it, that is going to continue yes. to be the case. And it shouldn't always necessarily be specific to a particular culture, if I understand what you're saying, although that is the baseline, but what a agencies should be doing is what you're suggesting for individuals to do, which is to take a look at their mission, vision, and values and be flexible and open enough to provide the kind of care that is, that is comprehensive for the population. That's right, because in the bottom line is that we as professionals are in this profession because we want to be effective with people. Mm -hmm. And so we want the skills. And what I'm suggesting is the skills that we have gained are necessary, but sometimes not sufficient mm -hmm. to serve other sometimes communities that in the past have not been served. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we know they haven't been served because we, we have the data that supports that. Mm -hmm. So in summary, can you give us um a couple of statements with regard to uh, this whole issue of cultural competency that you want to leave us with? It is important to realize that it's not a matter of um, anybody's um, intentions. It is a matter of what are the skills. Um, it's an issue of a commitment to gain those skills, um, we can do that. Mm -hmm. I honestly think we can do this. Mm -hmm. 
we can do this if we commit ourselves to do this mm -hmm. um, as individuals and as organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, we can work together and do this. It's not about being politically correct. Mm -hmm. This is about serving people mm -hmm. in the way that can improve their lives. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't add any more to that. I think that uh, what you have said has been very important for us to hear, and it certainly is helpful in terms of social service providers to be thinking about cultural competence from the standpoint of being open and flexible, which is what you had discussed before. I thank you for your time, mm -hmm. Anna Maria. I appreciate it. And for everyone out there in the audience, I would encourage you to look at the key concepts and the glossary of terms as a way to help yourself uh, watch the video and um, in addition to that to take the test. Good luck and good health.